On this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox, we're continuing our mini series on getting started with GitHub. We're going to see what happens when you actually write code. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and this is episode two in our five part mini series on getting started with GitHub. In the previous episode, we looked at how to create a project in Visual Studio, and then we created a GitHub repository with that code. And in this episode, we're going to start writing some code and see how we work with GitHub. So I created a simple console application. We have a simple line of code here. Let's make a change to it. So I'm going to change the greeting to hello, Visual Studio Toolbox. Now, Git is watching locally, and I can see that we have a change. So if I come down here to the lower right, and I look at this little pencil in the status bar, it says one, telling me I have one change. I click that, and I go to the Git Changes window, where I can see all of the changes I've made. And I can see that program.cs has been modified. Well, from here, I can undo the changes if I want. I can also stage these or stash them, which means I'm not ready to commit now, but I'll commit them later on. But in this case, I think I'm ready to go. So I'm going to enter a message, which is required. When I do a commit, I have to enter a message, which is a good thing. So I'll just say changed greeting. And then I have some choices. I can commit all, commit them to my local repository, which does not send them to GitHub. I might do that if I want to, uh, if I'm done working for the day and I want to make sure that I've kind of backed up that code, committed it to the repository locally on my machine. And then when I'm ready to send it up to GitHub, I'll do a push. So I'm going to do this right now. This is one of my favorite features. You have to save your files before you commit. I almost never remember to. So I, Visual Studio warns me. So I'll save this and commit it. And what that's going to do is copy these changes up to the master branch in GitHub. So successfully pushed. So now presumably, we can pop over to GitHub and look in the code and look in program. And there's the change I made. Very cool. Now, what we can also do in GitHub is click on this changed greeting and see what the changes were. Oh, I changed it from World to Visual Studio Toolbox. Very nice. Now, if I come back into Visual Studio, I know I have this change here. What I can do is, again, go to our branch history and see that I changed the greeting. So again, Robert is me locally. Robert Green or any changes I make on GitHub representing another developer or me on a different machine. And then I change this locally. And if I double click on this, I can see the changes. So this is the code that was, this is the code that is. I can switch around from side-by-side -side mode to inline mode, whichever one works best for you. Okay, so now, I'm not the only one working on this application, turns out. So maybe the other developer also decides to change the greeting. And I'm going to do this in GitHub just to keep it simple. Typically, you'd probably do this in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. But rather than have multiple Visual Studios floating around, I'm just going to make all my changes in GitHub. So I'm going to change this to Visual Studio Developers. I'm going to commit the changes, commit message defaults to update program name and extended description. I'll type changed greeting, and I'll commit this to the master branch. OK, so another developer has made a change. Now, back in Visual Studio, I'm told, hey, somebody changed your code. Now, I've got a couple choices. I can do a pull, which will bring down those changes and overwrote what I wrote. But maybe I want to see what the changes are ahead of time. So I can do a fetch. And what a fetch will do is bring down from GitHub the latest version of the master branch and store it in my repository history, but not overwrite my version. So now I can see what the differences are. So if I click here, I see I have one incoming. And I can see that program.cs was updated by somebody on the server. I double click on that, and I can see 
the code that I have, Visual Studio Toolbox, and the code it was changed to, Visual Studio Developers. And I'll decide, okay, that's fine. I'll take that. So now I can do a git pull and copy down the remote version to my local version. And now if I go look at my program.cs, I've got the latest version. So this is how I can keep my local version of the repository in sync with the remote version up in GitHub, which will be sort of our official version. And then if I come into the history and do a refresh here, I see that I changed the greeting locally. Somebody else changed it on the server. I did a pull to bring everything down. And now my version of the code locally is in sync with the version of the code remotely. And that's basically how we're going to have multiple people changing code and everybody then pushes it up into the remote repository, which is the official version. And then by pulling, we can keep our local copy in sync. So what we've seen in this episode is what happens when we start making changes to code. So we made a change, we pushed it up to GitHub, somebody else made a change, they pushed it up to GitHub. So we saw how you can have multiple developers or you working on multiple machines or multiple versions of Visual Studio, it all works, how we can keep our local repository in sync with the remote repository, which is essentially the official version of the code. If you're watching on YouTube and you like this, please like us, share with your friends, and come back for episode three in our mini-series. We're going to look at working with branches and see what pull requests are used for. We'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Thank you.